Today's episode is going to be great. I'm really excited because Blake Austin sent in a question. If you guys want to send in your own questions, make sure below in the show notes you guys submit your question to me. And from time to time, I'll answer some of these. So Blake Austin is a 17-year-old. Very, very cool that you're listening to the show. You're really into your personal finances and getting better and bettering yourself. It was awesome stuff, Blake. So I'm a 17-year-old in high school with a job and some other side hustles bringing income in. My problem is every time I make money, my first instinct is to spend it, even if I try to save it on things that aren't essential. How do I get out of this mindset? This is a great question, and I'm going to respond with three specific questions today because I think this is going to unlock the way you think about this. So the first question I want to ask you is what happens if you continue this cycle? Now, there's a lot to go in with this question, and I'm going to break this down, and it's going to be, you know, I'm going to share my own story here, which is um, pretty personal. So, and then I think the third question, by the way, is going to be the most eye-opening. So make sure you're listening to this entire episode. If you're in the car, put everything away, pay attention, guys, because this question doesn't pertain to just Blake, the 17-year-old. This question pertains to everybody in this situation that has a problem with spending. And a lot of times people don't address this in the mirror. So the first question, what happens if you continue this cycle? One of my favorite quotes, um, and I don't know who said this, maybe Layla Hermosi is where I heard it from, is the pain of staying the same isn't as bad as the pain of change. And so what does that mean? Is That means a lot of people stay the same because they realize that pain of staying the same, it, it stinks, but it's not as bad as what, man, that change that we have to, you know, have to, to make, to get to where we want to get. That's a really painful moment. The growing pains that come with that is really painful. So therefore I'm going to opt for the lesser pains because that's what human nature does. It opts for the easier route. And so when you can retrain your brain to not think the easy route, that's when you become a success. That's when you stop thinking this way. And when you ask yourself, what happens if you continue the cycle, here's what's going to happen. And here's the reality. Number one, you're going to have zero freedom. You're going to work forever and you're going to be a slave to your job. You're on your boss's schedule the rest of your life. So if you want to think like this, that's fine. But let me be very clear. There is no, you can't have it both ways. If in fact you want to think this way, that's fine again, but you're, it's going to come with some, some negative side effects, which are no freedom working forever. And you can't just retire when you want to retirement's a number. If there is no gap, between your income and your expenses, and it's, you know, you're spending all that you have plus some, you're never going to have that gap of investment dollars to build your retirement, to build early retirement, to build the life that you want to live. And I think this is the biggest question you need to ask yourself, because do you want that? And so sure, in the here and now, the short term thinking is, oh, man, it's, I want to go buy that Xbox. I want to go buy those new shoes. I want to go buy that new car, all these different things. But ask yourself, if you continue down that path, something happens, what's going to happen in your life? How is your life going to play out? And so a lot of people are short-sighted and thinking, and it's really hard for a, the average person to understand, to really think back, you know, or in the, in the future, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It's very hard for the human to conceptualize that because we are here and now animals. And so we got to be really careful with this assumption that we're just going to continue down this path and we're not going to ask ourselves the question, what happens if I continue this cycle? I often talk to people all the time in my DMs. They come to me, they ask me questions, they're all, man, I really want change. And then I talk to them, they're like, well, it's, it's really expensive for change. I'm like, well, hold on, what's the expense that you're currently spending with the, the actions that you're currently taking? They're like, I'm like, I can calculate that for you right now. It's millions of dollars. So are you sure you want to stay the same? Are you sure this is expensive as you just told me it was? Are you sure you don't want change? You just told me you did, but here's what happens is people will default to the easy default to the the simple. And what happens is you, you get put at a crossroads at some point in your life. And so you either go left and continue to do what you've always done and you continue to get the same results and be the average person out there that says the same thing, man, must be nice, man, blah, 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 because they're doing the same stuff that everyone else is doing. And when you do what 99% of people do, you get the results of the 99%. You can't do what the 99% do and expect the results of the 1%. The 1%, we, yes, me and us, or all my students within Budget Dog Academy, we operate differently. We think differently. We take different actions. And as a result, 
we aren't the 99%. We are the 1%. And it shows in our numbers. That is a factual um, thing. And, and the thing is, when when people constantly come at me or my students or they're like, man, there's no way that's real. I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what to tell them because the reality is the roadmap to financial freedom, which is laid out for, I don't even know, I think Amazon's selling it for a discount right now. This is the national bestseller. This is exactly what all my students go through in Budget Dog Academy. And so this is called A Millionaire's Guide to Building Automated Wealth. This game is simple. Uh, and for by the way, for anybody listening, uh, this is not a, a sell by any way, but this is this book is dedicated to my daughter. Um, so 100% of proceeds go to Gervais Syndrome in the pursuit of our million dollar donation goal. Uh, and I get zero profit for it. So I'm, it's not a sell at all. It's a great, I'm a, I'm a middleman. Think of it like that, right? I am the person that helps you guys or helps the masses with personal finance with this. And then as a result, any donations that come in or any um, revenue that comes in from this book will go straight to Gervais Syndrome 100%. So just as a heads up there. Um, and so all of my students follow this to, to T. Now this is obviously book form versus Budget Dog Academy. So if you're looking to work my team, really take it like, actual steps to work with me, work with my one-on-one team. We just got to review this a second ago this morning. Uh, the Budget Dog Academy team is stacked. I love that. Um, but if you're looking for that in the show notes below, you guys can apply to work with my team. You have to make over 100000 You have to be serious about this. Do not, please do not, you know, be, be respectful of our time and as well as yours and other people that are trying to talk with my team. Uh, and you have to be with a spouse. If your spouse is there, make sure your spouse is on board. Um, to have that conversation and not be that skeptical from the outside because we get those people too much. Um, and so, yeah, if you guys want to apply there. But the, the reason I say that and the reason I bring this up is because all of this stuff we talk about in the academy, in the Roadmap to Financial Freedom, are fundamentals. I'm a CPA. I don't get rich quick. I haven't gotten rich quick. It's taken a decade plus, 11 years, in fact. And so this morning I was looking at a review. I can actually pull it up right now. I can't actually share it on the screen because this is a, a audio, um, unless you're listening on my YouTube, of course. But I had a net worth win of 35000 over the last four months. And then on top of that, which is really cool, is week 16 wins from uh, financial freedom or sorry, freedom from financial anxiety. And so somebody came in, Megan Wiggins came in, it was really nervous, anxious, all this kind of stuff. Week 16, week 16, that's like not even four months entirely. She's increased her net worth $80,000. And again, it isn't crazy. Um, dra- the second thing she says here is drastic simplification of accounts, clear aligned family life and financial goals, weekly family meeting ritual locked in, budgeting accuracy improves weekly. She paid off her student loan, uh, clarity on when, where, and how we'll move next year. So some of these things that she's saying are things that are very simple in nature, but people don't take the action to do them because they don't think they'll get the results that um, a boring action takes, but the reality is boring wins. And so everything I've done personally, guys, I, we hit financial freedom and there's nothing about our situation. That's like crazy. I've talked about it at length every single day on social media. We were very transparent. We share every, every investment buy in my Academy to all my students. We show the pathway. We show exactly how to do this. And the more you understand this, the more, the quicker you're going to hit the financial freedom numbers. And so this question is, is phenomenal from Blake. And I love this topic because that's the first question I'd ask yourself is what happens if you continue the cycle? And so I'm going to share a personal story. And this is from what happened in the 08 time. So dad's in the mortgage industry. Mom's a a stay at home mom at the time, um, was also a private school teacher and, um, we're not fully prepared, moved up in house. And then being in the mortgage industry in 08, it came down, obviously, as everyone knows, um, the Great Recession. It was it was a horrible time. A lot of um, unfortunate events occurred. But here's the reality is if they were prepared, if they if they if they continued, Blake, doing what you did um, and what you've asked is every time you get money, you spend more money. That's what my parents did and God love them. But that's what happened. And so as a result, when the income stopped coming in, there was no buffer. And what happens, we lost our house. And so um, that took an impact to not only on the family as a whole, but also my parents individually. You saw it, you know, uh, dad lost a, a lot of weight, which isn't a good sign uh, in the reverse direction, like 30, 40 pounds type deal. And so this stuff happens a lot. And I, I want to put this um, in your ears because, you know, it's all fun and games when we're 
buying the latest and greatest and everything's okay. But it's not okay when you're your father and you lose your entire house and, and things go, it seems like they're collapsing. That's not okay. And it, it impacts people in a way that um, I don't know if I, I even want to put it into words because you guys can kind of piece together what could potentially happen to a family that this this type of event occurs. Um, the worst of the worst to where you lose family members if you if you catch my drift. And so you want to be very careful. And also, um, I know you're young, Blake, and I know anybody here listening is younger. And I was young when this happened to me. I was in, I don't remember, uh, eighth grade, freshman year of high school. But it was a, a something I've never forgotten. And I was talking to my behavioral psychologist about this um, within the academy. She's also in the academy. She works with all my students. And one of the biggest things she said was, the reason you paid off your house early was because of what happened to your parents. And, you know, I didn't even make that connection, but a lot of the stuff we're doing is subconscious. And so the question goes back to what happens if I continue the cycle? There's a good probability you continue the cycle unless you wake up because subconscious behavior drives everything. And so even for somebody like me that was technically on the right side of uh, of this is I did pay off my mortgage early. I, it was gone by 28, I think it was. But the problem was I didn't know why. And the, the why was because of the subconscious ex, ex, um, experience I had with that, seeing that. I was old enough to, to feel the emotions that came with that. I wasn't old enough to understand fully, but I was old enough to understand and feel the emotions and see the, the change in my parents' face and the way they talked and the way they acted and all that kind of stuff. And I want you to think about that because that hits home really hard to me. And so when I see these types of questions, I, I, I mean well, Blake, because – you're 17 years old, dude, and you're young, but you're not going to always be young, but you're not always going to be single. You're going to have a family. You're going to grow. You know, there's going to be a time where you're on the other side and you got to be prepared for this stuff and you got to be prepared before it happens. You can't wait till it happens, which a lot of people do. The second question I want to bring up for you, Blake, is why do you feel that way? And so the reason I ask this is why do you feel the need to let go and spend that money instantly? I always ask that question and because this is really, really important. And so not many financial people talk about the, the feelings or the emotions behind money, but this is in fact the reason everything happens. Subconsciously, even consciously, emotions drive. Emotions are the driver. And so this feeling that you're having is not about buy, the stuff you're buying. Like you're not like excited, truly excited about the stuff you're buying. You don't want a new PS4. You don't want a new or PS5, whatever they got now. Um, you don't want new clothes. That's not what it is. It's a reaction to a deeper rooted issue. And so I don't know what that is. And so what I will propose to you is saying, ask yourself why like a child. And the reason I say this is because this has been the most enlightening thing I've ever dealt with and done myself. It's not complicated, but it's being real vulnerable with yourself and going beneath the surface and not answering surface level questions, getting distracted by TikTok and all the other distractions we have. Sit down without a phone in a dark room, whatever the case is, in a private room and just think through this and ask yourself why. And when you answer the question why, ask yourself again and you'll go layers and layers and layers and layers to where you're going to feel very uncomfortable and you'll get the, re the reason why you're doing what you're doing. And it's really, really empowering because once you get to that root cause, then we can have a solution for it. And that's a different type of experience. Uh, and I've done this a lot and it's really shifted the way I think, do, and you know, act. Uh, and so I highly recommend that is your takeaway is to ask yourself why. There's a lot of different reasons, right? Some people do it from insecurity purposes. They have an urge to buy a new car because their boss does or their neighbor does, and they want to keep up with the Joneses because they're insecure about something. They want to feel enough. And so that's a very common trend. Um, maybe you're inferior. Uh, they buy clothes to look rich because they came from nothing. And so therefore, they've always had this appearance of, of their self-worth being down. And so therefore, if they buy nice clothes, they put a Gucci boat on, they put a, a nice shirt on, they feel as if their status is elevated because they've associated their worth with their experience growing up. And that's a very empowering thing when you realize that's why you're doing what you're doing. You're not going to shop. You're not going to get those new shoes. You're going there because you're trying to elevate your self-worth because you're, you're, you're internally, you're internalizing something negative on the self-worth level. And this is a very empowering piece of the puzzle. Understanding education of this. Sometimes people are impulsory, right? They, uh, they shop as an outlet to procrastinate. 
And so you joke about the Amazon purchases, you know, the, the people that joke about them, they joke about, oh, I can't get ahead. My budget sucks. I don't budget. My credit card's a mess. All these things. They'll say that as a joke and they'll, they'll, they'll use humor to cope. But the reality with that situation is that a lot of times that's just procrastinating on actually solving the reason they feel this, the way they do. And sometimes they're sad. So they buy stuff. Sometimes they're empty. So they buy stuff. Uh, but this is a reaction to a bigger issue. And what is that? It's different for everybody, but you need to understand why. And so I will tell you a story of in my academy, Miranda. So this is an individual that came into my academy. She was nervous as all get out. And she was telling me she had sweaty palms. I joke about the story all the time. If you've ever been to one of my presentations, I talk about it quite a bit because it's so empowering for the average person to listen to this because this is what you might be feeling right now. Miranda came with sweaty palms. She was all nervous. She was like, I don't know how I can get ahead. And within, uh, that was like January 31st. And by February, I think it was 20th. I remember the dates because I tell the story so often. So like less than like in a month later, she paid off $10,000 of credit card debt and cut her expenses in half. And it wasn't a cutting exercise where it was like, hey, I can't live life. It was a cutting exercise in a good way because it was the, those late night Amazon purchases that did not provide her anything, any sense of satisfactory. And so she went through this for a long time. Then she was nervous. Because the way she grew up, she had anxiety around money. But why was the question? Anyway, she paid off her credit card debt. She did all these things. Then she landed a $500,000 job because she released that anxiety from, from being a child when she was a child that led into adulthood. And so that anxiety that was crippling as a, as a child for some reasons personally from, from her parents that she, she shared was still with her as, in adulthood. And this is very common with, with every, we all carry baggage from our childhood. And so when you study that, you understand what's going on at the at that level and you're you're working with a true behavior psychologist like Heather within Budget Dog Academy, you're going to realize a different you and why you do what you do. And Miranda was feeling this way and she was getting the results of that anxiety because she was carrying this baggage and as a result, she wasn't getting anywhere because she was so fearful. Then she released that. Then she paid off her credit card debt. Then she cut her expenses. She went to Oahu uh, in Hawaii for a vacation in the meantime. And then she also landed a $500,000 job because she was more confident. She released that anxiety. And a lot of people feel this way. So as a child, her parents would take, they were very, uh, not frugal, even cheap to the point where they, she, she couldn't get stuff. She couldn't get that new stuff. And that she talked about this at length. And, and that's what drove this anxiety because my parents never had money. It was really tight. They would always take things away. They'd always be selling stuff. Now they were in a different position. And so this is what happens oftentimes. So that's the second question. Now, the third question I think is one of the most important things to consider is how will this adversely impact others in your life? And so those people, Blake, I know you're 17. I know you're young, but what, how is this going to adversely impact people? Not, not just you. This isn't about you, dude. Like you're young. I get it's about you right now. You're 17. But what happens when you have a family? What happens when you have a wife? What happens when you have children? What happens when you're a brother, sister, son, et cetera, et cetera, right? What happens? Uh, What kind of life are your kids going to lead? And so if you're behind the eight ball, you haven't taken the accountability, you haven't taken the, uh, you haven't stepped up to the plate for you as a person, as a man, as you go go into adulthood, what are your kids going to do? How are your kids going to lead? Because the thing is, the parent is going to shed off all their values, beliefs, all that kind of stuff to the child. And if they see you struggling with money, they see you doing this stuff and you're not leading by example, what are they going to do? Exactly what you're doing. And you're going to perpetuate the same thing over and over and over. And our goal is to change the way of thinking, change that line of thinking to where we reverse course, we change all the negatives, we turn those into positives, and we change that going forward so that our children live a better life. This isn't to spoil our kids. This isn't to put them in a you know trust fund baby, quote unquote, in a bad way. This is to change the world in a positive direction. And you have an opportunity to do so, especially given that you're 17 and you're pretty young. Um, what type of spouse will you be? What, you know, will you be able to provide? So what, you know, back to the story, the personal story is what if your income runs out, what happens all of a sudden and you, you don't have the money you once did, you can't spend it because you lost that income, but those expenses still continue. What happens when you have children? What happens when you have a spouse? The reverse happens. Bad things can potentially happen. And that is going to be the reality Because at some point in your life, you will lose an income. That's part of life. That's part of unfortunate events that are going to occur at some point. You might be disabled. One in four people become disabled in their investment, in their working lifetime. So from 20 to 60, one in four people. 
A lot of people don't want to hear that stat. Get disability insurance, long-term disability insurance. Talk about this stuff all the time in the academy. All these protection agencies for when you lose an income because it will happen, whether it be disability, whether it be job loss, whether it be a recession, whatever the case is, something is going to happen. Are you prepared for those moments? Most people are not. I think the average person has like 400 bucks to their name in the savings account. That is alarming. It's also uncalled for in just a lack of accountability. And I don't really care for anybody out there. It's like, well, that's a privilege take. No, it's not. We make too much money in America. Wake up and smell the coffee because you have an opportunity to change. And if you keep being a victim as a, whoa, it's so hard for for us out here. When you make $150,000 a year or even $80,000 a year, that's your fault. That's not someone else's, you know, privilege take because I get that a lot. Anytime I say something about accountability, it goes to, well, it must be privileged. No, it's not. It's called accountability. Wake up. America's lost the accountability art that we used to have when people used to take accountability for their actions. Now it's just, well, everyone's lucky or everyone's, you know, got this or that. And I'm, I'm, you know, marginalized in many different ways. And, you know, people from my situation and it's everybody, it's, it's everybody out there has some reason they could use as to their disadvantage. Um, and then what issues does this cause down the road? Like I said, the recession hits, the family needs something, you know, whatever the case is. So I'm going to share a really personal story and this better hit home. And I'm just, I'll be shocked if it doesn't at 22 years old, Blake, you're 17. So this is five years after I was in college at 17, obviously, or actually high school. Um, but as I headed into college and I graduated college on the revert on the other side of, uh, of life came away with a lot of debt. Um, there was $304,000 of total debt that was including a mortgage, 228,000 of that, but 76,000 of that was not mortgage debt. 40 of that was student loans. You know, you get the point. And so at 22, that's where budget dog began. And I didn't know budget dog didn't really become a brand until 2019. So way after, but 11 years ago, when I was in this position, we had a choice. It was my wife and I, we had good paying jobs out of school. We were making $92,000 as a, as a couple. I was making 50,000 at Deloitte. Um, she was making 42,000 with 92,000 to start off really, really nice salary. Um, especially joint household income. And we had a choice. We paid off $76,000 of debt that year in one year, one year making 92,000. We increased our income with side hustle income, but we were very, very, strict. We were, we could have sat there and said, well, we have tons of debt. There's just not fair. We graduated. No one told us that's what happened. But the thing is, if I continued that thought process and I went down that pathway of just, mm, just happens to us. It's unfortunate. 10, seven years, eight years later. So from 22 to 30, we were single, we had kids, but we really got after it financially. Now, if those la- those eight years, if I went back on those eight years and I stayed the same and I, and I asked the question you're asking today and I didn't make the applicable changes, my wife and I sat there and we just looked at each other with cross eyes and had no idea what to do. If we did that, this book, well, hold on, this logo wouldn't be a thing. This national bestseller wouldn't be a thing. This $1 million donation goal wouldn't be a thing. I want to be talking to you right now. And so let me talk about what happened with this million dollar donation goal. At the age of 30, we had our first child. Most people say kids are expensive. We prepared a little bit. Um, We made sure we were ready for that kid. Logan Lee was born September 4th of 2021. And within five months after that, you know, she was born, perfect birth, perfect uh, health. I remember asking my wife, I remember specifically there was a cry that she had when she was getting her first bath. And I said, something's not right. And I, and I didn't really trust my gut. I kind of said it and I kind of went on. I even asked the nurse, I said, is that normal baby cry? Like that doesn't seem, it was a piercing scream. And, you know, every last parent in the world, every last person in the world told me, oh, no, not a big deal at all. And, Trust your parental instinct. Trust me on this because I knew instantly the second she was born, something was wrong. Now, for five months, this continued. We knew something was off, you know, and I remember specifically parents thought we were weird at different parts. She didn't want anybody to hold. It was very 
bizarre behavior for a regular, you know, newborn type of child. And I can confidently say this now that we had our second, where it was a whole different experience, very normalized experience. And so a lot of people are like, yeah, first time parents overreact. No, it wasn't. This was a total gut reaction and total understanding of what was about to happen. And so for the first five months, again, I didn't know what was wrong. My wife didn't know it, but we knew something. We were ready. I was I was about to present to a, a company. And I remember getting out of the shower and I was, I don't remember what time, it was like six o'clock on like a Friday. And I was just about to start presenting to a company um, that paid me to come in and speak to their employees. And I hear Aaron scream, my wife, she's like, something's wrong with Logan. I don't know what's wrong with her. And like, we didn't know what a seizure was. This was a seizure happening. We didn't know at the time, like instantly what was happening. She was shaking. It wasn't like, it wasn't like a typical seizure. And she was also five months old. And she was having her first seizure. And so I ran into the room. Obviously, I canceled it. And we took off to the, the hospital. I canceled the, the uh, presentation. And from that moment on, and that was 2022, we had $200,000 of medical bills. We had a life-altering type of syndrome that my daughter was presented with, and I say blessed with, uh, of Gervais syndrome. And so Gervais syndrome impacts 1 in 16,000 children. If I had the belief or my wife had the belief that at 22, it wasn't that important and we just wanted to spend money and be selfish, we wouldn't have been in the position to help our daughter in the way that we have. And let me explain what we've done. So number one is we aren't victims. So when when this happened, we had a choice. We could continue to do what we did, complain, you know, whatever the case is, be the average person out there, or we could take action and change her life. And so that's what we did. I can't, I can't even go into detail as to what all we've done, but I can give you some high level bullet points is first things first is we decided to move across the country to get the support she needed. So we moved from Cincinnati, Ohio to DFW almost overnight instantly. When we found out the situation, we found out there was a specialist in Dallas, Fort Worth, and we knew we had to get there. So without question, we were moving. Number one, that's a big cost in a new city, jobs, all that kind of stuff. Number two, We had to get my wife out of her job, and she was able to quit her job because of the position we put ourselves at such a young age, which was beautiful. I stayed home for the first year, in fact, and a lot of people don't know this. I stayed home for the first year as a stay-at-home dad, and my wife was working. We got ourselves in a position on the back end to let her stay home, me go full-time with Budget Dog, and um, with all the stuff we've done, hit financial freedom at a very young age. She has to stay at home with her. There's no other alternative. She can't go to school like a regular child could. She would have seizures all the time. There's a different level of parenting with Logan that we don't have with Ellie even in our, our, our second daughter. And it's something that it's hard to explain to the average mind because of all the daily stuff that we go into. So I'll give you a good example. If we give her a bath, there could be a seizure because the water changed in temperature. Um, think how awesome of an experience a lot of parents have with giving their child a bath, right? Playing with ducks, whatever the case is, having fun. So many pictures of me growing up in a bathtub, right? Can't do that. Going outside, she wears an ice vest because the temperature change can really spark seizures. She can't walk normal. Like like normally, it's still a struggle. There's still a lot of imbalancing. Can't speak as much. Um, There's a lot of impact on a daily basis. I used to, um, when I stayed at home with her, we couldn't run the blender. We couldn't make sounds. They couldn't be like, the sound is a very big trigger. Light is a big trigger. Can't go out in the sun. Wear special glasses, all that kind of stuff. Um, prescriptions, that is. Can't do all that stuff. And we used to hold her for three. I would hold her in my arm, my, my right arm, like this. Phone in the other hand, working on my phone. And I would hold her for three-hour naps during the day. And so I don't say that because I, 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 I'm trying to show, like, hey, we did so much, blah, blah. We're, we're going to do a lot as parents, right? That's not my goal here. My goal is to show you that life comes at you fast, Blake. And if you're not prepared for that type of moment to where it costs $200,000 for your family for medical bills, and the following year is not much cheaper, and the following year after that's not much cheaper, and that's the way of life going forward, and you're not set up, and you're barely you know breaking even, your whole life could crumble beneath you. And I don't mean that to be um, like irrational or crazy or uh, 
to like emphasizing of like the the question but i've seen this happen in many capacities in my life to where somebody thinks this is okay and then they lose a house in the great recession when no one expects to lose a house everything was riding high guys and you got to remember this remember history everything was riding high right before that and so oftentimes everybody thinks it's never going to happen again and it will it absolutely will. So when we were riding high in 08, we lost our job. All of a sudden, it was like at the peak of the mountain to in the gully. When we were having a kid, we were so excited. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, crap. We're in, we, we, we just, our whole life just got shifted overnight. There's seizures. There's development issues. We got to move across the country. We're traveling across the country for different you know specialists. Um, you can't just pick a kid up and go. They might have a seizure. There's so many different triggers. The daily course of life looks different. Like it is an entirely different life than we lived at 22, 23 years old. But at that age, Blake, that's when we figure this out. That's when we started this process so that in this situation, God, like, thank God, we weren't in a position where we're like, well, we can't move. You can't stay home, Erin. She has to go to daycare. I can't even fathom the idea of daycare with Logan. And, and for anyone that knows her, has come across her in his little seen her you wouldn't notice for the most part she's the sweetest girl in the world but the idea of going to daycare like i don't think you understand how much anxiety that would raise my wife and i's um situation like it would have been it, it was insurmountable to let our child especially with that which was could be triggered on the on a, a light ray coming through the window the wrong way like the easiest of things, uh, somebody dropping a pan in the kitchen, boom, seizure. Like literally that would happen. And so, or getting in the bath or, or touching water or um, a bunch of kids running around. Like seizures would happen all the time. We would be a nervous wreck. And if we weren't in the financial position we were because of the decisions we made, because I asked ourselves the same question, Blake, when we were young. We wouldn't live, she wouldn't live the life that she deserves. She wouldn't progress and, and develop the way she is as a result. We have seen Duray's syndrome play out many different ways. And obviously there's only so much control you have as a parent. Um, but what we know is we're going to give her every opportunity, every type of um, situation we can put her in positively to influence the way this goes. And so there is no cure at this moment. There is some some there's some studies in trial that hopefully there's there's a cure one day. But right now it's medication and band-aiding and keto and supplement galore and a, a long list and a lot of alarms at different times to make sure this just works. And so this wouldn't be the case if you asked yourself that question. If I asked myself that question today. Blake and I didn't ask myself that at 17 or 20 year, 22 years old, like I explained, we would be in a much different position. So I hope our personal story hits home with you. I know it's probably not as emotional or you can't feel as much as we do, but what I will speak from as a father, one day there's a good chance you're a father. You don't want to let your daughter down. I will leave you with that. And I will see you guys next week. You've been listening to Money on My Mind with your host, Brennan Schlagbaum. If you found value in today's discussion, share it with someone who could benefit from it too. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already so you never miss a money mastery tip. Until next time, stay passionate about your financial journey and keep taking bold steps towards your money goals.